quantum biology and quantum effects in biology has become a very important topic um, in the last 20 years. What is the main question um, related to quantum biology and to quantum effects in molecules? When you have molecules, essentially they have a function. Most of them have important function. For example, enzymes uh, can be used in our body to uh, accelerate some reactions. The key question is how a molecules can achieve its function. And usually it's via simple processes such as ligating to another molecule, releasing energies. Up to now, uh, in the last century, in the 20th century, people have been accepting that most of these effects were driven by essentially classic, classical physics, essentially by um, typically the uh, large-scale effects in, only involving you know, temperature, a solvent, many atoms, and quantum, quantum physics was never really involved in this kind of phenomena. Uh, there's been a slight change of um, of thinking around that in the, in the last 20 years. In particular, when people realize that there are very simple phenomena which cannot be understood if you do not involve very specific quantum effects. And I will give you one example which I think summarizes very nicely this situation. We probably all know about hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a simple molecule which is in our bloodstream. And hemoglobin is actually responsible for respiration. Uh, it's a molecule which uh, is quite large, but essentially contains a small kernel uh, with an iron atom, and this iron atom is binding to oxygen, and this is the reason why you can breathe. So you have essentially uh, this iron atom binding to oxygen flowing in your bloodstream from your lungs to the rest of your body, and you can transport oxygen in the, you know, and breathe and use oxygen um, uh, um, as, a, as a mean for, uh, for, 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 for life. Um, so this is a very simple molecule, very simple function, and there are ways to, uh, to model this process. So if you know, the, your molecule hemoglobin is binding to oxygen too, you can calculate, for example, your, the binding energy, how much energy is used in the binding of hemoglobin and oxygen too. And quantum physicists uh, have been interested in this question and they try to answer that question. Uh, starting with the simplest possible explanation, so they essentially try to model iron binding to oxygen and they say this is typically a classical state. So classical state meaning that essentially you can picture your electron and you can put a position in space and they behave like classical objects uh, and you have a transfer of charge from iron to oxygen. And okay, they try the calculation, they did all the maths and everything. When they did that, they ask a second question, which is that, well, hemoglobin is also known to bind to another molecule, carbon monoxide. You might know that actually carbon monoxide is toxic. So the reason why carbon monoxide is toxic is that when hemoglobin binds to oxygen 2 on one hand, or to, or to carbon monoxide on the other hand, well, there's a very slight imbalance of energy towards carbon monoxide. So if you want, carbon monoxide sticks to hemoglobin, which inhibits the respiration function. If carbon monoxide sticks to hemoglobin, hemoglobin cannot bind to oxygen 2, which is what you want in your body to breathe. So carbon monoxide is toxic because of that. The imbalance in energy is very small. So going back to my story, physicists try to do the calculation. What they actually find is that there is a very large imbalance towards carbon monoxide, actually a 20,000 times larger chance to bind to carbon monoxide than oxygen too. So if this was true, of course, there's no way we could breathe, isn't it? So this actually drove a few questions, many questions, and actually this started in the 80s, in the 1980s, and since then people have been trying to solve this puzzle. How can we explain why hemoglobin binds to carbon monoxide and oxygen too with the right proportion? And this is a simple question, but was a three decade long mystery. So quantum physicists try to address this problem. And it's a very interesting, I would say, um, event, because if you want biology and quantum physics, we are so far very independent communities. But with the more and more advances of both fields, people realize that there might be things we could share, and there may be thinking which are developments done in quantum physics that could apply to biology and vice versa. So there have been more and more discussion across these two communities. And 
interesting ideas emerges and some of these ideas actually were stemming from the field of high temperature superconductivity which has nothing to do at all with quantum biology and with hemoglobin but some of the ideas developed to understand superconductivity were also applied to quantum biology and especially to the problem of, of a simple problem of hemoglobin. So by doing the calculation involving quantum physics where essentially your electrons are not really only in one position in space. In quantum physics, your electrons are in different positions in space at the same time. It's a slightly strange phenomena. But using these simple ideas, which we know is true for atoms at very small temperature, in hemoglobin, we actually realize that you can correct the calculation and that what you find is that hemoglobin and the iron atom is essentially in a very strong quantum state which is as electrons which don't really have a given position in space but are delocalized. This was a very new result, very surprising result and changed a bit the way how you might say hemoglobin. It's surprising in many regards because if hemoglobin is a quantum molecule and it has different position in space at, different, at the same time, it's not how we picture blood, isn't it? Uh, this, we know that we are not quantum objects at the macroscopic scale. We all have a given position in space. So, of course, this only, ap this only applies to the small kernel of hemoglobin, which is consisting of a few atoms, typically 20 atoms. So these are very localized quantum effect. But because hemoglobin only binds at oxygen 2 at this very specific location, where you have iron plus a few atoms around, this is a very well localized action, if you want, which involves just a few atoms and which can sustain quantum effects such as binding to oxygen 2, where essentially your electron at these scales are delocalized everywhere and are quantum. Um, so it was interesting to understand that in some simple example like that, quantum effects are important. You might say, well, it's not very important because at the end of the day, I know what hemoglobin is, I know what it's doing. But this quantum effect have significant consequences in real life. So if they change the binding energy to ligands, such as oxygen 2 or carbon monoxide, they change the energetics of your molecule and this is a real quantity. This is something you can measure and you can test it. And actually there is a simple way to test it, it's called optical absorption. You send light on your hemoglobin and you see if hemoglobin absorbs light or not and you send light with different energies. Uh, this is a way to test binding energy and to test how your molecule responds to these kind of things. And it has been shown that indeed uh, you get a very good prediction of the op optical spectra by including this quantum effect and that they do correct most of the absent features uh, that you wouldn't have with classical physics. So this is a very interesting progress which is very promising for the future. Uh, if it applies to hemoglobin you can imagine a large range of molecules where um, essentially binding energies are very important. Um, typically there is a very important one uh, which is, which come to my mind at least, there are other applications, but one of them is called Photosystem 2. Photosystem 2 is another of the landmark problems in biology, it is essentially a complex present uh, in plants and actually responsible for photosynthesis. This complex absorbs light and allows to convert light to energy. So you essentially have a very simple complex, very important for its application. And the interest to understand photosystem 2 is not just to understand photosynthesis. The idea is that if we can understand photosynthesis, we might have a perfect way to absorb light artificially in an artificial complex that we could use for application. Uh, that's actually what we call biomimicking, where you mimic uh, the chemistry or physics of a plant or of a biological complex in a lab such that you can apply it to something else. Um, so Photosystem 2 is another system that people have not understood and where clearly there is a strong belief that quantum effect will definitely be very important um, to explain the mechanism how you actually convert light to electrons and how these electrons whole pair can move in the compound. So, there's a whole range of phenomena that you could think of where quantum effects are important in biology. Um, some of these complexes and most of these complexes, we believe, will have involved um, ions 
atoms which are transition metal ions. So typically this would be um, iron, um, this would be manganese, um, this would be zinc. Uh, so there's a, there's, we, we have an idea where quantum effects might be important in this system. So the biological molecule involving this transition ion are usually the one having an important function, which is quite interesting. So there's a whole range of molecules, and if you look at them, the important ones, which are very active and do something very specific, involve these atoms. So there's a philosophical question behind it, which is actually, how does nature know why it should choose iron in hemoglobin to achieve that particular function? So it's a bit of reverse engineering. You could imagine that you replace iron with something else, with, for example, zinc or, for example, manganese. Could you achieve the same function? So what the calculation have shown is that actually, most likely no, you will not achieve the same function if you replace in hemoglobin iron, for example, um, with uh, manganese. It's, you will get completely different functions and you will not be able to bind to oxygen too. So there is a very clever way that nature has found to use quantum physics in an efficient way to achieve a given function. And uh, this is a topic emerging now in science, combining biology with quantum physics.